Okay, so we've got time for me to get started. So uh, this talk is Data HMI and Microsoft Bob. What we're looking at here are modern vulnerabilities that are very reminiscent of things that we saw in the 90s. Uh, my name is Wesley McGrew. I'm a research associate. That's my title at Mississippi State University, but I wear a few hats there. And uh, you see tons of different affiliations. Basically, they're all part of uh, our computer security and computer forensics research that we do there. I also see some of my personal uh, contact stuff there. My Twitter accounts in the security and my personal website at security.com. So uh, if you're asking what is it that I do, who am I? Uh, my primary job is to train law enforcement on digital forensics. Uh, law enforcement and wounded veterans coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq to give them the ability to uh, get jobs in digital forensics. Uh, primarily, these people are, are not tracking hackers, so you don't have to worry about that too much. It's, it's mostly a child pornography thing, although we do mess around with hackers on those days. So, we also do some uh, control system security research as part of the Critical Infrastructure Protection Center. Uh, with that, we have guys that look at the vulnerabilities in PLCs, uh, networking protocols, uh, encryption being used on SCADA networks. Uh, my research in that area is on state HMI, the user interface. Uh, personally, my interest is in learning breaking things, uh, figuring out how they broke and figuring out how people broke into things, uh, some reverse engineering, and uh, asking about social media data mining. Uh, my personal contact information there, email address, all that good stuff. So for this talk, we're going to be describing some HMI products. Uh, we're going to talk about which of these products actually provides any kind of security functionality in there. Some of them do, some of them don't, some of them advertise, and some of them don't. Uh, and then I'm actually going to tie it to that Microsoft Bob thing. I'm not just throwing that in there for the hell of it or anything. Uh, we're going to look at some vulnerabilities in, in Microsoft Bob and in state HMI products. And uh, we're going to have a couple of demonstrations of this. So there's a cartoon dog that's going to help us break Microsoft Bob. Uh, we're going to bring him back in for the uh, for one of the HMI products. Uh, but we're also going to show you how some of these uh, products really do a bad job of, of very basic security principle things like password storage. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had the problem with LinkedIn uh, not hashing their password script and they didn't use a salt. We're going to look at some. Uh, some products here to uh, store passwords in a much more insecure way. Uh, we're going to tie it all together with some lessons learned and which you can take home from this, which you can play with, and uh, then we'll have Q&A. So, uh, so you know about me. Now, for you, uh, what you're going to get out of this talk on, you shouldn't be walking out now. Uh, uh, if you're a vulnerability geek, if you're like me, you always see what's coming up on Exploit DB. You always are looking to see uh, what's, what news is being posted and what modules are doing in Exploit. Uh, if you're an Exploit spotter, essentially, you can pick up some really neat and easy tricks, especially if you're new to this, because a lot of these vulnerabilities are not uh, crazy, you know, heap overflow type things or anything like that. It's very easy to exploit, very easy to find these kind of vulnerabilities, so you can find your own out there as well. If you're uh, experienced with this, if you are, who's kind of, who's, who's, uh, who's constantly finding remote code execution type stuff and, and, uh, and correcting shit, uh, then you can just gasp and horror or slash and flee that it's this easy. Uh, if you're a pen tester and you're going after or, uh, any kind of control system network, any kind of a, a critical infrastructure, you may be able to take away some stuff from this on uh, how to escalate and leverage as access to SCADA HMI. So, uh, especially with password disclosure vulnerabilities, even if your target isn't the HMI, there's a good chance that they're reusing those passwords elsewhere. Uh, if you're a SCADA versus control system stakeholder, chances are you're not at death time. But if you are, uh, then, then you'll see this and you're like, well, the box said that it provides authentication and security. Uh, and, but after the user realizes that, that might not be the case, and you might want to start layering defenses around this. It's not necessarily a uh, the, the checklist of security features isn't necessarily the, uh, what you should be going on. If you're an HMI developer, then you're going to be composing a nasty email to me, especially since these uh, since.
since uh, this talk was a substitute talk, uh, the O day is particularly fresh here. Uh, the vendors found out about this a couple weeks ago. Um, so uh, basically, what you learn from this is uh, how to how to develop secure against devices, or what not to do, very least, and uh, what sort of principles you might want to follow. So uh, a lot of skater talks, uh, a lot of control system talks, uh, uh, basically he wastes a whole lot of time on the alphabet soup of control systems. I'm not going to go too deep into this or anything. Uh, I'm going to say that you went to a skater talk before because they've been pretty prevalent at conferences for the past few years. But the idea here is the part that we're most interested in here is the HMI, the Human Machine Interface. So, uh, we have systems that, that have you know, PLCs out in the field and anything that are, that are doing stuff. Uh, 